so I think these are ra framed reasonably close to the same. Hey guys, Greg C96 here, coming at you with a video that serves two purposes. One, it's a story time kind of video, and two, it's to actually just test these two cameras against each other, see if there is definitely a significant quality difference. Um, I'm comparing two cameras right now. Uh, the one I'm looking into right now is my trusty, is not, no, <laughs> The one I'm looking into right now, the one I'm talking to you right now, is my trusty Nikon D3300 with my Rode Video Micro that I've been using for a while now, that I know how to use, that I love. So that's this camera. What I'm looking at now is the new contender, which is the Canon G7X Mark II. Um, it's a little camera. Its autofocus is super snappy. Like this, this camera is in full auto mode right now. This camera is on my manual preset with a manual focus external audio, all that good stuff. Uh, connected up to a big screen that I'm staring at right now, like a big 40 inch TV, using that as an external monitor to watch the camera, pull my focus, all that stuff. This guy is on like a little uh, Joby Gorilla Pod on a light post. I'm gonna bring a third camera in here so that I can really hate myself. Um, but as you can see, this is the setup that's in front of me right this moment for doing these tests. I'm sorry, this is super shaky. I'm not very steady, as you guys know. But anyways, so I said today was story time as well as comparing these two things. I've gone two or so minutes into it without doing a story. So the story I am going to share today is from several years back, like seven at this point. It was between my freshman year and my sophomore year of high school. So, between my sophomore year and my freshman year of high school, um, this was like probably early July, so like midway into the summer. But, or actually, no. Early July would have been like fresh into the summer. So like probably middle of July, I would say. So middle of July, I'm walking over to my neighbor's house. Um, like I've done several, several times before, uh, another neighbor across the road, um, notice I have to walk in the road, I walk, I, w bleh, I live on a private dirt road, there's no sidewalks, there's also like no traffic, so I'm walking in the road, but I'm walking all the way to the left side of the road, and their house is on the right side of the road, and all like five or six of them are sitting out in the driveway with their dog, uh, their dog was a pit bull, like your standard stocky type of pit bull, because there's different types of pit bulls. There's, I don't know, I'll put a couple on the screen, like pictures of different types of pit bulls, because there are different types of pit bulls. But this is like your standard pug, like the pit bull that everyone knows what you're talking about when you say a pit bull. So it's that type of pit bull. And um, sorry if I'm switching back and forth between cameras a lot. I don't really know which one to look at. Some of you guys probably aren't even watching this video anyways. I also just really pissed off editing Greg by going back and forth like that. Um, but anyways, so yeah, I was uh, walking across, walking down the road across the street, like 10 feet from their property. And I'm walking, and all of a sudden I hear a bark, a loud bark from this pit bull. And I turn my head, and here's the thing charging at me from across the road. Now keep in mind... I live in a state where there's leash laws. If you're not on a fenced piece of property, your dog is supposed to be on a leash or a run or anything like that. This dog was not on a leash or a run or anything like that. So all of a sudden, this dog is charging across the road at me, and these jackass neighbors aren't doing a goddamn thing. They're just sitting there. Um, they're just freaking sitting there. And the thing charges, and it jumps up and puts its paws up, and it opens its mouth wide the thing was only like eight months old but when it got up on its hind legs it was like almost eye to eye with me uh, he could have very easily reached forward and grabbed my throat at that point with his mouth luckily he didn't because i guarantee i wouldn't have survived that i freaking guarantee it um because it already had freaking strong jaws and what it did is instead of going for the throat it dove down and it got me in the back of my right knee my right knee, right? Yeah, my right knee. 
I see the scars. Just wanted to verify that. I'm tired, so I want to make sure I got it right. But it was my right knee. Back of my right knee. And he goes down, and he hits the back of my right knee, sinks his jaw into me. Um, got three of his teeth into me, which was pretty lucky, I suppose. His two top canines and one other tooth that didn't go super deep. Um, but the two canines, one barely glanced, and one went, like, all the way in super deep, like three quarters to an inch into my leg, uh, and it hurt like hell. Not at that exact moment, though, because obviously at that exact moment, I had adrenaline from a pit bull charging at me. <laughs> so, he bites me. He's, like, grabbed onto my leg, and the freaking neighbors are still sitting there not doing a goddamn thing. And I can't tell you how much that pissed me off. Um, but anyways, but anyways, um, I, I just had like a flashback to the incident, freaked me out a little bit, <laughs> but anyways, they're not doing a damn thing. So I'm like, I got to get this thing off of me. So I reach my arm down around its throat and like, if this is his throat, I just compress on his throat and cut off his air. Um, cause I was like, I gotta get this thing off of me. What do I do? Well, if its mouth is plugged up with my leg and all of a sudden it's getting even less air, it's going to let go. So I choke the dog, which I hated to do cause I'm a fan of dogs, or at least I used to be a big fan of dogs. Um, I choke the thing and the dog makes a whimpering noise. As soon as their dog makes a whimpering noise is when the neighbors all of a sudden decide they have to do something. That's when they decide they have to do something. Not when the dog charges at me. Not when the dog bites me. When I hurt the dog. That's that's when they have to do something. You know. That's in exactly that moment. Not before to avoid this whole thing. At that exact moment, that's when they needed to do something. A bunch of friggin' assholes. Um, so at that moment, they do whatever. The dog lets go because, you know, I choked the damn thing. Uh, they bring it back over to their house, and the woman starts looking at the back of my leg, tries telling me, oh, it's just a scratch. And I said, well, it sure doesn't feel like just a scratch. So I walk back to my house. I go in my kitchen door, or my front door, which leads into our dining room and our kitchen. And I say to my mom, like, at this point now, mostly in tears, and I'm like, call 911. The assholes across the streets pit bull just attacked me. And my mom immediately calls 911. She hasn't seen me walk in the door yet, so she has no idea what she's expecting to see. And I just kind of like kneel down in front of a chair in the kitchen where I'm over hardwood floor, so it's not going to get all messed up if I bleed all over it. And I'm just sitting there waiting. And in the 30 seconds to, um, in the 30 seconds it took for my mom to call 911 get an ambulance and police sent out and get up to the kitchen to take a look at my leg. I had like a big dinner plate sized pool of blood underneath my net leg on the floor. Uh, so at that moment, my mom runs over to the bathroom, gets uh, towels, hydrogen peroxide, and I don't remember what else. Uh, my mom's a nurse. She's a registered nurse, been for a long time. Uh, so she gets right on getting, trying to stop the bleeding cleaning this thing up. Uh, so she does a very good job. Um, police come, they ask me questions, you know, did I provoke the dog, whatever. I explain the story, I just explain to you guys. I don't use as much profanity though, because I am talking to the police, I try to be respectful. Um, when I'm talking, I, I just try to be respectful talking to people. In this you know, you're like a friend. I'm addressing the camera as a friend. I speak like I would speak to a friend. When I'm in the real world addressing people, I try to be respectful, no profanity, that type of thing, unless I'm a friend. But yeah, so I explain it. They get the ambulance. They take me into the back of the ambulance. Um, the police officer gives my mom a ride over to the hospital with me. I'm in the back of the ambulance. They're asking me all questions about what happened. Uh, they look at it and they go, wow, your mom did a really good job cleaning this up. We don't really have to do much, which was not surprising. Because like I said, my mom was probably a registered nurse for longer than that person had even been a nursing student. 
<laughs> so, uh, so I get to the hospital, they're cleaning it up, and at this point, now I'm confronted with like my biggest fear, because when the police questioned the family, the dog had not been vaccinated, ever. The dog had never been vaccinated. So for all I know, this could have been a rabid dog. Way back when, needles were like my biggest fear. I was so afraid of needles. It was freaking awful. So, I, having just been attacked by a dog, I needed to get like five or six different shots because it might have been a rabid dog. I have to get the first shots of the rabies series, and then I don't remember exactly what they were, but they had to do injections into each of the open wounds. Um, the smaller wounds only needed one shot, but the big one where you got like an inch into the back of my leg, they had to do an injection into the wound. I didn't need to stop the G7X probably because I don't know what its recording limit is and I should have like found that out, but I did need to stop the Nikon because I was coming up on the 10 minute mark. So that's why there was that little jump there. But yeah, so they had to do the injections into the wound. And then on top of that, I needed four other shots. Um, so it was like, yeah, just about eight shots I needed that day in the hospital. And by the time I'm in the hospital, now the adrenaline has worn off because it's been some time. Tell you what, easy way to get into the ER, go in being attacked by a pit bull, they get you right in. You skip ahead of all the sick little kitties and the old people and you get right in. <laughs> so I'm in and I'm now, because it's the back of my leg that has the holes in it, I'm laying on my stomach my leg hurts like hell because the adrenaline's worn off. I'm freaking petrified of the fact that I'm about to get like a whole bunch of shots. And because of the fact that they're not like your normal flu shot with the little tiny needle in the arm, they're in a fresh open wound that hurts and a relatively big needle. That was like the worst possible. That was the worst. That was worse than the dog attacking me. Like that was freaking terrible. I just, I started crying and it was awful. Um, so they get those done and you know, they're, you know, the wounds are draining still, cleaning themselves out, getting cleaned out. Um, so I'm sitting back up now in the hospital bed and they're like, well, the choice is up to you guys, but because the dog has never been vaccinated, we very highly recommend instead of waiting for them to go get the dog, test the dog uh, to see if it's rabid, we highly recommend you starting the rabies series. And, you know, my mother insisted on it. I was still absolutely freaking terrified, but I'm very glad mom did because I think it's something like, I think realistically it's something like you have 10 days to start the rabies series after you've been attacked by a rabid animal if you want to like live. <laughs> Um, so we started immediately, which ended up not mattering because the dog wasn't rabid, but we had no freaking clue, right? Like, we have no idea if these people are going to skip town or get rid of the dog, and they're not going to be able to find the dog and test it, right? We have no idea. You know, they were assholes enough to let the thing attack me. Who knows what the hell they're going to do? Um, but yeah, so, and I started, and the way that worked is all of a sudden three nurses come into the room each with, uh, words hard, each with, uh, syringes. And all of a sudden, the way they handled it was, um, at the same exact time, I got one shot in each thigh and one shot in this arm. And then as I was reeling from the first three shots still, they came back and got me with a second shot in my left thigh. So I got all four starter shots for the rabies series done, taken care of. So there is a bright side to this story, though. The bright side to this story is uh, those neighbors very shortly moved out after this, as well as the other bright side is after that, I was no longer afraid of needles. Uh, so getting attacked by a pit bull, that may, uh, getting attacked by a non-vaccinated pit bull, it's not good for a lot of things. But one of the things it is good for, the moral of the story, one of the things it is good for is it is apparently very good for getting over your fear of needles. <laughs> so that was today's story time. Um, 
comment down below what you think about um, what you know your thoughts on the story. Uh, also, let me know though, camera versus camera. If you really, if it was a noticeable difference that the D thirty three hundred was significantly better, or if the G seven X is actually a pretty good camera, I'm gonna have my opinions as I'm editing this. Obviously, um, this, I'll do a video about why I purchased the G seven X and all that. But I just I want to know your opinions now about what you think. Was it a significant difference? Was it insignificant? You know, let me know. Um, but. That is it for now. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you appreciated it. And uh, blah, blah, blah. Rest of my normal outro. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.